Well, I've seen a number of videos here on YouTube from people who have visited Korea. And something that they all tend to have in common is they struggle to pronounce a lot of the words and names that they see on the signs that are written in English, the Korean words and names that are written in English. And I totally relate. And I just want to point out, it's not their fault. And if you're in that situation, it's not your fault. Well, hello there. It is a warm Friday afternoon here in Seoul. Uh, got a nice, uh, light, cool breeze going on, which makes it pretty much perfect spring weather, um, excluding the uh, unhealthy air quality today. Uh, but, you know, that's the price of living in Seoul, I guess. Now, right now I'm walking along Gangnam Daero, Gangnam Boulevard. And if, if memory serves, uh, as, as I remember, this was the uh, first major street in Seoul to become a uh, no smoking zone. Um, at the time, it was just a stretch of the street uh, from right up by uh, the Shinnonyan station, I think, down, down that direction. I don't remember how far it went, but now I believe it's the whole street and uh, most of the major streets in Seoul are no smoking now, which is pretty cool. But yeah, this is the south side of the river. I've, I've come here for my daily walk today. I speak Korean well enough, and I've been here 30 something years, and those English versions of Korean words still trip me up sometimes and cause me to mispronounce words that if I saw them in Korean, I would probably pronounce them correctly. Now, I don't do that with every you know word I see, uh, but you know there are certain certain words when written in English that do cause me to mispronounce them. So let's just take Gangnam for example, G A N G N A M. Now when I see that I know it's Gangnam. It, it that one doesn't trip me up. But if you don't know anything about Korean about Korean pronunciation, then when you see that, especially as a native English speaker, you're gonna say Gangnam. It's just, that's what it says. G-A-N-G-N-A-M, Gangnam. The idea of Gangnam just does not enter your head when you read that word Gangnam. So if that's you, if you're seeing that, you're hearing Sai sing about Gangnam style, not Gangnam style, but even so, if you see that and you say Gangnam, that's perfectly fine. It's not your fault, okay? There are some subway stations here on line two, uh, starting here with Gangnam Station and going east over to Samsung Station, and that they, they give some good examples of, of, of what I, the common things that I, I want to talk about. Just a, a few simple tips, three or four, not many, but Gangnam is, is the first one. And as a general rule, when you're reading a Korean word that has been transliterated to English, Romanized, they say, then when you see that A by itself, there's no other vowel next to it, it's just, just uh, uh, an A with a couple of consonants, maybe one in front, well, always one in front, and maybe another one behind it, whatever, then you can pronounce it as A. Ah. A solo A is always pronounced as A. Ah. Think of it as A-H, A, ah. yeah, Gangnam, Gangnam. Right? That's it. A solo A, it's never going to be a long A, the A sound, the gang, nam. It's never going to be a, eh, nam. Yeah, it's gang, nam. Yeah. So, simple thing to keep in mind when you see the A. And if you don't remember it and you still say gang, nam, don't worry about it. So, let's go down through Gangnam Station and out the other side onto Tehran No and head east toward Samsung Station.
uh, we are on Tehran Street, Tehran Row, and this street uh, is named for the city of Tehran in Iran. Um, and in Iran, there is a Seoul Street. And so what happened is, in 1977, the mayor of Tehran was visiting Seoul, and the Seoul government proposed that the two cities exchange street names. Excellent. So they did. So this street used to be called Sam Samnungno, and in 1978, they renamed it to Tehran. -no. So if you're ever visiting Tehran and you see Seoul Street, you know the counterpart is right here in Gangnam, Tehran. -no. And this is also known as, this, this, this whole area here is kind of known as Tehran Valley because there are a lot of technology companies here, uh, a lot of startups, um, computer security firms, a lot of computer security firms around here. And I believe Hynix has or had offices here, the chip maker. And um, yeah, so, so many different tech companies. So Tehran Valley, Silicon Valley. Um, So, Romanization, the transliteration of Korean characters to English characters. The problem, one of the problems with Romanization is that there's more than one system. And the system that you see employed on all the signs today was adopted by the government in the year 2000. It's, it's called the Revised Romanization of Korean. That's the name of the system. And before that, they used a different system. So there was this uh, big shift in the early 2000s that was a little bit jarring, uh, for me anyway, and I'm, I'm sure other people, other expats had the same experience, but, you know, Gangnam Station, it's spelled with a G now. Under the old system, it started with a K. And that really influenced my pronunciation of, of the word Gangnam, because the, the character that it represents is actually somewhere between the English K and the English G. But seeing that K in the name, at the start of the name, always caused me to pronounce it with the hard K. So I would always pronounce it as Kangnam, Kangnam, right? And of course, you know, people who didn't understand about the correct pronunciation of the ah sound, they would come in and say Kangnam, right? Like General Kang, if, if you're a Star Trek fan. Um, but even after they changed it and adopted the new system and changed the K to the G, uh, that still, I, I, I always, you know, mispronounced it as Gangnam, Gangnam. I've gotten better now. I, I usually say Gangnam, you know, when I'm thinking about it, Gangnam. So another problem is that, you know, there was a different standard in use before and but that was just by the government. You know, any standard you see on these, these signs, the, the public signs, the, the government signs, is the government standard. But, you know, private businesses and private property, you know, they don't have to follow that standard. And a lot of companies, older companies like Samsung and educational institutions, you know, a good example that comes to mind is Gongguk University. When they were established, they just used, you know, whatever system was around at the time. They picked one and they, they used it to establish their names in English. And that's why, you know, Gongguk University, see, I just, I just pronounced it with a K, a hard K, Gongguk University, it starts with the same character as the Gangnam Station name does, you know, the same Korean character, but it is still spelled today with a K because that's the, the way it's always been spelled. So when they, when the government adopted the new system in 2000 and they had to change, you know, you, you have the sign on Gongguk University Station. Well, do they change the name, the spelling of the name in English to reflect the new system? Or do they keep it the old way because that's the way it's always been? for the university. It's part of the university's branding. And they kept it the old way.
All right, Y-E-O. Now, having watched a lot of those videos, those travel videos, travel vlogs, I, I can pretty much guess that a native English speaker seeing this for the first time, this word is going to pronounce it as Yeoksam. Yeoksam, right? I don't know how a native French speaker or a native German speaker or whatever, you know, would, would, would say it, but a native English speaker would probably pronounce it that way as a first step. Well, we already know that the A sounds like an ah, so we know it's not Sam, that, that second syllable, so we can put that aside. It's Sam, right? But that first syllable, that Y-E-O, the E-O represents a sound that is almost like an English O. It's not quite the same. There is another character that is very much like an English O. It's pronounced O. But this E-O, it's pronounced O. O. So the correct pronunciation of this is Yoksam. Yoksam. Yo. Yoksam. Again, you're, you're not going to, you know, be criticized for mispronouncing this as Yeo Sam. But one thing about this EO to be careful with is if you are saying it as Yeo, then what's going to happen is sometimes people might not be understanding what you're saying, right? People might not understand what you're saying. So you, you get into a taxi and you tell a guy, I want to go to Yeo Sam station. See, I can't even mispronounce it. <laughs> I want to go to Yeok Sam station. The taxi driver might take a little bit to grok what you're trying to say, all right? So just think of the EO as similar to an O. And that way, when you mispronounce it, you'll probably mispronounce it as an O instead of a EO kind of a thing. And people will be more likely to understand you. So one interesting thing that's been happening in Gangnam in recent years is, is they started establishing what they call fine dust free zones. Okay, zones, little areas where you can go into where they filter the air to get out the, the to get the fine dust particles out of it. And you can see little uh, booths on the side of the street, usually at, at bus stops, I think, uh, they've set up uh, around uh, Gangnam. But uh, the underpasses also, the underground pedestrian passes, the pedestrian underpasses, there we go, that's what I want to say. <laughs> They've been uh, retrofitted to be uh, fine dust-free zones. So what happens is you uh, get down uh, underground here, and in the passage that used to be just a plain empty passage uh, that was uh, the route from one side of the street to the other. Uh, they've now enclosed it and set up the filtration system and put in some greenery. I was so quiet in there, I didn't want to talk. I was afraid I'd disturb everybody. It felt like a library. But yeah, if you're walking around Gangnam and you want to take a break, and it's in the spring or summer when the air is, you know, nasty, here's a good place to come and take a break. Okay, so there's a lot going on with this one, but the main thing I want to focus on in terms of pronunciation is the EU. 
in the second syllable there. Now, this is another one that will trip up a lot of native English speakers. How do you pronounce that? I mean, is it you? It's like the E-O earlier, the E-O, is it E-U for this one? Well, no, it's not. But this is another one that's you know kind of difficult to get right because uh, you know we don't have anything like it in English, at least not in, in normal words. Now, I think maybe in some situations, like when you're in pain, you can make a sound that's very similar. Uh, but basically, the, the EU is pronounced like ooh, ooh, okay? A good way to think about it is to stretch your, your lips, right? And, and, and get a little bit of space. Ooh, ooh. That E-U-N-G is pronounced oom, oom, yeah? The pronunciation of the subway station name here is Solung. Solung. Now, that's difficult to say, and if you get it wrong, no worries. What's interesting is that Koreans don't always pronounce this the same way, okay? So, Solung is, according to the rules of, of Korean, the language, is, is correct. Uh, because of the position of, of a couple of the characters, right? But a lot of people will pronounce this as sungnam, sungnam. They pronounce it as two ends, and there, there, there's a reason for that. I believe the full name is sungjongnam. I think maybe because it's sungjongnam in the full name, people pronounce it as sungnam uh, in the short name. So the name sungnam of sungnam station comes from this place right here at the end of the street where all the trees are. That's Sungjongnung. It's a park now, but what it is is the site of some royal tombs from the Joseon dynasty. Uh, one of the kings, uh, Songjong, Songjong, he was uh, buried here. He was like the ninth king of Joseon. And his third wife is buried next to him. And his second son, who was also a king later on, uh, Jung Jung, he is also buried in the same site. He, I think he was buried somewhere else first, and they moved his grave here later. But yeah, so there's two kings and a, and a queen buried there. And oh, there's some interesting stuff to say about uh, that particular, particular uh, branch of the Joseon dynasty. Um, you know, Song Jung, you know, had three wives. His second wife, was executed and his first son who uh, came from his second wife was the king after he died and became this this vicious tyrant i guess and anyway lots of stuff to talk about with the with that family so this building right across the street here this is the uh postco building Posco is, uh, they started life as the Pohang Iron and Steel Company. Posco was the short form of their name, I guess, and now it's officially the company's name, I believe. But there's uh, some interesting history behind this company as well that I'm not going to get into today. But, you know, I've talked about Pak Chung Hee, the former president of Korea, the dictatorial authoritarian president uh, who was in power from his coup in 1961 until he was assassinated in 1979. Um, one of his big things for boosting the Korean economy was heavy industries. And he thought steel, the steel industry, was, was going to be a, a big one for Korea. They needed to have their own steel industry. And so he was uh, the reason that Poong Iron Steel Company was founded. And he did it with money basically with money that came from Japan in reparations for their, the colonial era. And that was a huge controversy back then. So there's a lot to say about Poong Iron and Steel Company. And I'm going to talk about POSCO and I'm going to talk about uh, the, the kings and queens of uh, uh, Sungnam Park back there in future videos. Um,
in my last video, I showed a sculpture from an artist named Kim Gyung Min, a sculptor. And it was in a park in Shindang Odong, the neighborhood of Shindang Odong. And now here in Gangnam, close to Samsung Station, uh, this is another piece by Kim Gyung Min. And it's got that same distinctive style of elongated features. You see the, the long feet there. So, I mean, aside from the fact of how big it is, all the features are elongated. So, yeah, you can find her work all over the place. There's another Kim Gyung Min piece over uh, across the intersection over here. All right, so what's special about the Samsung? I mean, we've already covered the Sam, right? The A is A, we, we've already covered that. We had Gangnam and we had Yok Sam, and we've already covered the EO in Yok Sam. So this is Samsung. But the reason I wanted to end here is because the name of the station in Korean, in Hangul, is exactly the same as the name of the company. The company, the one with the telephones and the TVs, Samsung, that we all pronounce as Samsung, right? But it's Samsung in Korean, right? Samsung. Well, we always pronounce it as Samsung, and that includes me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the subway station name with the EO is the same as the company name with the U. And Again, that's the problem with romanization. It trips you up on the pronunciation sometimes. So again, not your fault if you're mispronouncing it. If you come here and you call this Samsung station, no big deal. But just know that Samsung doesn't own this station, <laughs> the company. They own a lot of stuff, but they don't own the subway station here. Okay, it's named for the neighborhood. This is Samsung Dome. Well, I hope you found these tips useful. Uh, if you did, then I'll provide more tips like that in the future on pronunciation and, and reading and such. However, I will leave a link in the description below to a video that you should find helpful. It's not one of mine, it's, it's from somebody else, uh, but you should find it helpful on learning how to uh, read and pronounce Korean because I'll tell you, learning to read Korean is not difficult. I, I learned that very quickly when I first got here, uh, thanks to a, a course I took. It's the only course I ever took on Korean. I already knew all the vocabulary that they taught us when I went into it. I'd been here a couple months and picked up that vocabulary already, you know, all the basic stuff. Uh, but learning how to read was very, very, very valuable and I, I, I learned it very quickly. It's not difficult. And if you watch this video and you work through it and practice it, you should be able to pick it up in just a few hours, uh, the, the basics. Um, and so if you're coming to Korea, I think it's worth the investment to, to learn how to read the Korean. And because that way, when you get here, even if you know you don't understand what you're reading, as long as you know like place names and that kind of thing, you can always read the Korean and, and understand where you're at because you're not always going to have English on the signs. I mean, there's English everywhere here, you know, there's no doubt about that. But sometimes you'll be looking for a place and, it, and the, the name will only be in Korean. So it's, it's good to be able to, to, to understand it when, when you see it. So yeah, go ahead and do that. And I'm hungry. I got started early today, actually, uh, but I've been out here for about four hours now and I haven't eaten lunch and I'm gonna probably eat somewhere here at the Coex Mall. Um, but in the meantime, uh, to wrap things up, I guess I'll go ahead and show you the Starfield Library. I know 50 million people have put shots of this up 
on YouTube already and I'll just add myself to them. So yeah, we'll end with that. And I wanna thank you as always for liking and subscribing and watching. And if you have any questions, email me Q&A at MikeFromKorea.com. I'll email your answer and please be sure to check your spam folder if you don't see a reply for me from me because some of my emails are going to spam. I have been told. Uh, so if you get my e if you don't get an answer from me via email, check your spam folder. And I'm collecting questions and I'm going to put out a Q&A video real soon now. In fact, I may be filming that next. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes next week. So that's it. And here is your gratuitous view of the Starfield Library. And now I tell see you next time. You I guess this uh, escalator appeared in a drama or something because so many people film each other going up and down it. Tourists everywhere here, yeah, but this this particular, the, the escalator in particular, look at that. Everybody looking back toward the camera. It's kind of like the zebra crossing, the Abbey Road album. Yeah, I did that one. I walked in the wrong direction though. I can be a tourist when I want to.